Uh, I haven't done a live in a really long time. What were you doing? Um, you like I had a baby or something? I had a baby. I've been a little busy. But we're going to hang out today with my good friend, Kim Howerton. I'm here visiting the farmhouse. Yeah. Getting so, to see the, the knee slit. <laughs> right. Baby Bonnie yeah. is taking a nap. Hopefully she will continue to take a nap. She's been a little bit of fussy. But um, Kim spoke at the summit on Saturday. If you haven't watched that, go check out Keto Chow's YouTube channel. You can watch her talk. It was really, really good. You can watch my talk. It was really, really Harry's. good. Thank you. That was his always good. Yeah. He's. We don't have to say that. Whatever. It just goes without saying. Nurse Cindy spoke to Crazy Ketos. Autumn Weathers. I keep wanting to call her Jones because that's how I met her. Yeah. She got married. <laughs> she got married. Yeah. So, yeah. Today we're going to do a cook with me. Cook with us. Cook with us. Yeah. Sorry. See? Mm -hmm. I'm tired. We're both tired. It's been a long week and it's only Tuesday. Yes. Ooh, oh, isn't that, that fun? There's like a background going mm -hmm. on there. Right. That's a cool, like I'm using re Restream today so we get all this extra stuff, but that's all a right. little distracting. All right. So we are going to be cooking a, oh, Lily, baked brie with bacon jam. We are still like, you can't, you don't get the recipe today. This is our second time making it, but it's going to be in our holiday cookbook, which is going to be available soonish. It's a mid-ish beginning October-ish. Right. But uh, if you're on my text list, you can uh, know for sure because I'll send that out immediately upon it being available. Let me add that number for you guys who are not on oh, yeah. it. Get on it. It's free. You can cancel at any time. I don't spam you. It's just basically you get notified when I go live and when things are happening. I'm watching her type. It's I know that's fascinating TV. Fascinating stuff, yeah. Um, and so yeah, we're gonna make this recipe, but there's a lot of like just let that cook time in this recipe. So yeah. we thought we could answer some questions. Yeah, we'll do in a between. Q &A too. So yeah. um Nisha is all booty and brains. Thank you. <laughs> okay, all right. I will take that. I all think right, all right. right. My booty I was like, you know, like a good like, friend, you're like waiting, like, does she want me to be like back her up offended or like, is she supporting that? I'll like, I'll go either way. I'll take it. All right. Moment. All right. So we are using just some baked brie from, uh, it's just some brie. Yeah. You can use whatever you choose. There's a lot of different brands and a ceramic dish. I guess you could probably put it in anything. You could put it in anything, but it's always in my opinion, kind of nice if you bake it in a thing that you can then serve it in. Right. Because it's a you want it to stay warm. Mm -hmm. So that's why this is nice. This is pretty. a Staub uh -huh. baking, baking dish. dish. It's really cute. I actually got this as a gift from Egg Life Wraps. So shout nice. out to Egg Life Wraps for sending me this because now I can use it. I was like, what am I going to put in this little thing? It works perfectly. Uh, perfectly. Let me take a sip of my coffee. Yeah. But yeah, you could cook it on like a baking sheet because what all we're doing for this part is we're going to warm. We just want this warm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put bacon jam on top. Yes, it is obviously keto, low carb friendly. It is not carnivore, but this is uh, going in our holiday cookbook. So it's, it's, you know, we're more flexible around the holiday. Some people aren't, but we are. And I feel like most people allow for a little more flexibility. Right. We won't be doing the carb count on this because we also, during the holidays, focus on ingredients more than carb count. But we're not, you know, we're not eating cakes and candies all the time, right? Even if they are keto, this is for the holiday. Right. And quite honestly, this is a very low carb it recipe. Is. It is. But yeah. some of the other ones, like our turtles, um, not super, low. not super low carb, but good ingredients and a tasty treat for the holidays. But yeah. Okay. So okay. preheat your oven to 350 degrees, which we've already done. And then Kim's going to walk you through. The okay. Rest of the so the ingredients are pretty simple. We've got a yellow onion. We've got a package of bacon. This is from butcher box where you can use any bacon. It's a 10 ounce package. Uh, we have some, Diced tomatoes that were in a can, but are out of the can now. Add some cayenne, smoked paprika, and garlic powder. That's all the stuff you need. And a skillet. And a skillet. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to chop this onion while Nisha looks at some Moderates. things. Oh, actually, I'm going to do the bacon first, actually. 
because yeah, we cook the first. bacon first, and then we use the drippings from the bacon to cook everything else. Uh, let's see. Sufficient Me says, can you shout my wife, Brittany? She loves your stuff. Hi, Brittany. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you for the super chat. All right. So guys, if you have any questions for Kim or myself, you can drop them in the comments. And while we're cooking this up, we'll answer some questions too. All right. Hey, John. Hey, Crystal. I think Natalie's here too. Did I see Natalie? I think I did. The frying pan is what's up. No, it is. It is right in here. Lily. Lily is thanks that she is helping us. <laughs> Lily dog. Can you lay down? Can you get down? Lay down. She's a very good dog. Okay, somebody asked, is the primal health coach program worth the money? Well, that depends on what you plan to do <clears throat> with this certification. Uh, and like where you're starting out from. So for Kim, I would say she doesn't need that. <laughs> She's been doing this a very long time, coaching on her own. I don't know how to turn her oven on. We have, Stove on. We have a, and um, health coach certification isn't an accredited thing. So you don't have to be certified to be a health coach. Um, the main thing is you need to be uh, educated and have practice and all of those things. But if you're not someone like Kim or Dr. Barry or myself, and, and it has nothing to do with credentials, like Kim's not a nurse. She's not a doctor. But she has world experience and client experience and things like that. So she can do it without, you know, certification. Most of the time, it's just so we can say we are certified we took a course and it does offer a lot of information and things like that. It is a really well built program. So if you are someone who is wanting to do this, I would say it's worth the money. If you are really wanting to take that step and make it your career so that you have credibility. But I just want to be clear. You don't have to be certified. You just have to be upfront <clears throat> about your qualifications. Yeah. Don't try and pass. Yeah, I, I'm not suggesting that you would out there, <laughs> but you know, just be honest with, you know, Hey, my real expertise is comes from my experience yeah. or my study or whatever. And I'll be perfectly honest. People seem to care very little about certifications if they're your people mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. don't talk about more than you probably should. Yeah. And you've established what you know, what like, you know. and don't yeah. like try to be all over the place, like teach what you know, coach what you know. So if you're someone who has, you know, had infertility and that type of thing, then you should probably coach people who have the same issues as you because you're, you're an expert in that specific category. So like, you know, find the area where you would most be able to help people. Uh, so for Kim, she's really good at helping people who have stalls to break and are struggling to stay consistent and that type of thing. All right. So I'm just going to tell you guys something. So I just literally took it out of the pan, out of the pan, out of the container. Right. And I left it that way because I'm actually just slicing across. So you can see I just I'm just slicing down, but thin, thin bits. Right. So they look like this. But you don't have to like separate each piece of bacon right. and cut it up. I'm just cutting them up kind of in, in there already. Yeah, they'll separate right. themselves in the pan. Um, so Kim says, I'm an RN and I want to change my focus health coach or something. I think for nurses, we feel the need to have letters behind our name. And I think that it's good to always continue education. And that's kind of in our blood. So I think that would be a great program for you to take, Kim. Because and ultimately, I think if it would make you feel more confident and more comfortable, yeah. then do it. And you do get exactly what you put, like, you get your money's worth. They And they continually update their curriculum. They have a Facebook page where, where they are very active. They answer lots of questions for their coaches. They do live webinars a lot. They are very uh, in touch with their coaches. They don't just let you take the program and then go, Okay, here you go. They really follow up with you. And I think that is really <clears throat> what makes the program worth the money. They don't just drop you when you're done. Uh, we're talking about the Promo Health Coach Program for those of you coming, just coming in. <clears throat> Ooh, where did that go? Hey, Crystal. 
Intermittent fasting seems to come naturally when eating low carb to no carbs. Love how the proper human diet works. Amen to that. Uh, Melinda, can you recommend a resource for a first time mom for the first year with a newborn? I raised five kids, but my youngest is 16. Uh, the book back then was what to expect in the first year. Is that still the one? Um, so you mean like milestones and such? There are so many. <laughs> I think that one's probably still very good. I am going to be very honest. I don't read a lot of those type of books. Uh, <laughs> Is there a book that you would recommend? On what subject? The first year of um, raising, a, raising a baby, newborn to one year. <clears throat> like the whole package? Yeah. I don't know of one that I would recommend. I mean, there's there's some out there, but either the nutrition is wrong. Yeah, what I find is there's a lot of information you don't need to know that will just scare you. <laughs> uh, and, and kids aren't that complicated. They Long are time. just tiny humans, you know, and, and I think knowing, I think leaps, I think there is a book called wonder leaps and I do use that. And it kind of just walks you through how your child is advancing in their development and they're more fussy because their sense of sight has become better and they're overwhelmed. And so they may be more fussy, but it has nothing to do with you and they're not starving to death. They're just going through something and it's temporary. Those that one, I like that one. But to be honest, it's, it's those type of books kind of overcomplicate. <laughs> Thanks. Now I'm peeling an onion. We're peeling an onion over here. I put the, I put it in the pan. I use a deep pan so it's less splashy. Yeah. And I just put all that in the pan and I'm cooking it on medium high. We're going to just cook up the bacon. Yeah. Uh, Melissa said, Nisha, your speech was great. You look natural, but real. That's so important in these times. I'm new to your family's channel. I'm loving you guys. Thank you, Melissa. Kim. Yes. Neil said, your talk from the summit was great. Our teenage daughter has watched it, and it is making a difference in her mindset. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Hi, I'm Neil. so glad. Neil was in person there, him and his lovely wife. Bacon is life. Bacon is love. I totally agree. <laughs> and nutrition. And nutrition, yeah. Is there a target date for shipping of the physical copies of the Common Sense Labs Guide book? So we are not in charge of exactly, like I can't tell you the, like the date to the day, but I can tell you the books will start shipping at the end of this month. So they'll, they haven't started shipping yet. Some people got confused on the, on the weekend because we did have a few physical copies, just a few because there was an early print run, but the for official us. for us, yeah. So the official print run hasn't started. That is going to be happening at the end of this month. And then they'll be shipping from the printer directly, which is on the East Coast. And, um, you know, they shouldn't take too long after that. But we don't start shipping until the end of the month. All right. Is cheese on carnivore diets? Yes and no. It is technically carnivore, but for a lot of people, um, they find when they take it out, they see even more benefits from taking it out or limiting it. So I still eat some dairy. I don't eat it every single day. It's more of an occasional treat for me because it does cause some issues, especially heavy cream. It makes me have cystic acne. So I can't have it all the time. But for some people, they can have it more. And some people need to just avoid it altogether. And some people do fine on different types of cheese, like goat cheese. Some people do really well with goat cheese, but can't eat cow's cheese. So it really just depends. Um, my talk on Saturday, which is on the Keto Chow channel, kind of talks you through how to figure out if you can allow dairy in your carnivore diet or your keto diet and if you can't. Now I'm chopping onion. Chopping onion. This recipe is super, super, super simple, but it's so delicious. And yeah, it's going to be in the cookbook coming soon for the holidays. Uh, we have a lot of new recipes going in the cookbook this year, so I'm pretty excited. And you could, if you are sensitive to onions, you could leave the onions out. And I think it would still be 
pretty you delicious. Could just put some bacon on top of some brie and be pretty happy with yourself. Yes, so. yes. And that would be carnivore. Yes. And baked brie by itself, honestly, is amazing. This is just kind of a more festive baked brie. Thank you, Kimmy. No problem. So uh, we are making, where did it go? Baked brie with bacon jam. So if you want chips. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to tell them. <laughs> We ate this, so we did our, our first trial run yesterday, and we ate it with the Carnivore Crisp chicken breasts. It was so good with that. It is. They're um, not, they don't have a lot of flavor if you don't put something on them. It's very neutral. That's why I like these to use as actual chips, because it doesn't taste like meat, really. It just tastes like a crunchy chip. And uh, so if you are needing that, you can use pork rinds, too. Or we, I like to eat it with just a spoon. It's that good, too. But I have a discount code for these. Uh, Berry. B-E-R-R-Y. If you're wanting to order some of those. I would um, say they remind me of a Parmesan crisp. But, but without less the flavor cheesy. of Parmesan. Yeah. Like there's that umami flavor of Parmesan. They don't have it's that. Too much, that it's too much. I don't much. like Parmesan chips. That it's over. I love Parmesan. I just don't like it as a chip. It takes over what I'm trying to dip. You know? <clears throat> Melinda, I made, I made your meatloaf recipe and can't get enough. It's so delicious. It's one of my favorite recipes that I've come up with. Is that in the holiday cookbook? What do you, no, what do you put in it? Ground beef, ground veal, ground lamb. Well, that can't be good. <clears throat> right? Uh, Parmesan cheese, egg, uh, the usual do you seasonings. Uh, I think that I did. Okay. Parmesan cheese and pork rinds. And then I top it with some bacon. Nice. And um, I put coconut aminos in there too. That recipe is on my YouTube channel for you that guys good. who need it. Um, yeah, so there is not a pre order Karen yet, but if you are on my text list, I will be letting you guys know when it is available for pre order. So if you're on my texting alerts list, it's not a conversational thing. And it's free, and you can just type stop at any moment if you're sick of hearing from me. Uh, and I send out when I'm going live. I send out when cookbooks are going up, tickets are going on sale for PhD Summit, those type of things. You guys know it first, and the Patreon community knows it first. So get on there if you're interested. So I'm basically mincing these onions. I want them kind of small and the bacon is just cooking away. It's on medium high. Like it's, you want it sort of making some noise, but not like, you don't want to feel like you're death defying oil situation. It's just <laughs> cooking away. <clears throat> so Kim kind of answered this question in our panel at the summit. Bruce said, ask him to share the sequence of explanations one would make to the uninformed doctor about being on a carnivore diet. Um, I would probably first say, hey, um, I've cut out refined grains and junk food. So like go with like the thing, you know, they're going to say, well, good job. Right. I stopped eating, drinking sugared sodas. I stopped eating refined foods <clears throat> like fast so food with all the good uh, things I, i've i no longer eat you know kind of just go through that i wouldn't probably say i no longer eat vegetables i would say you know i no longer eat refined grains and things like that i eat a lot of healthy uh, you know healthy protein, protein meat uh and and healthy fats mm -hmm. and i would just stop there i wouldn't use the word keto i wouldn't use the word carnivore um, you know, they, they still may, might say, well, you're getting plenty of fiber or, or, you know, things. And you could just say directly to that, like, you know, I don't feel well when I do that. So I, I don't, um, and, and, but I, you know, don't use words that they don't understand is yeah. what I would probably say. Yeah. Sorry. There was a tag and it was driving me crazy. Okay. This is a... Ivy says, what other electrolytes can you recommend other than Redmond's? They've been out of stock lately. Yeah, I know. A huge bummer. I would suggest Element. They are super tasty. Uh, watermelon is my favorite. What's your favorite, Kim? Well, it's a limited edition <clears throat> flavor, so you can't oh. get it right now. But I really like the grapefruit. 
That one's real good. They yeah. can bring it out every summer. The watermelon tastes like a Jolly Rancher. It is so good. And they're high sodium too. So um, Ultima, tasty, not enough salt. Uh, they're great for kids. I love Ultima for Beckett and his like electrolyte drinks and stuff. Not because I'm afraid of him having salt. He just enjoys their flavors a lot. They have a lot of flavors. Yes, they have so many flavors. But so if, I really like Ultima too. But if, if you if you ever drink tea, if you ever get the Starbucks tea, which I bought, you can buy it. It's a Tazo brand. You can buy it yourself. Yeah. But if you get the red tea from them and you get it unsweetened, you can put a raspberry element in there and it's it tastes like a raspberry lemonade. It's really good. So uh, you can find Element and Ultima on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. But obviously they have a website. Do you have a link? I do. Element? They can go to drinkelement.com slash Kim Howard. Drink element.com slash Kim Howerton. Yeah. All right. So uh, screenshot that and that will give you a sample pack or a discount. I think it's a sample pack. Sample pack. And it's a good one. Like there's like 12 or something in there. It's a fair it's amount. Quite, it's a lot. You could, so you, the sample pack, you can try the flavors um, and you only have to pay like five bucks for shipping. Mm -hmm. and, and so you can, you can see which ones you like. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm still not over this thing. You're, you got, you lost your voice a little bit and it's yeah. not come back. How do we get on your text list? So all you have to do is text hi to the number on the screen right here and then follow the prompts. And then you'll get alerts when I send out when I'm going live and cookbooks and all that kind of stuff. It's free. You can cancel it anytime. Okay. I'm going to put next? this in. This, so this is the brie in the container. I'm going to put it in the oven to start warming up. And the oven's at 350, and we're going to leave it in there for about 15 to 20 minutes. I'm going to set a timer. Yes, because so we, we forgot to do that yesterday. It's eight packs. Okay. Thank you. Can butter cause inflammation? Uh, it is very rare that butter causes inflammation, but I guess there are some people to do better with ghee. Uh, but for the most part, butter is very safe for nearly everyone. Obviously, it's uh, better if you can get some good quality butter. Sure. If you have like a true dairy allergy, <clears throat> I could see that being a thing. And then ghee is has the solids removed. Yeah. Watermelon seems to be very popular among everyone else too. Oh, all right. There you go. It tastes like a jolly way. It does. It's really good. Um, also, yeah. So, if you've watched my What I Eat in a Day vlogs, you may have seen me put the chili mango on an avocado, which makes the avocado taste like a mango. Like, and you don't need much, just a little bit. Also, oh yeah, the most popular one of all is the chocolate salt. Oh yeah. <clears throat> is it called chocolate salt? It is called chocolate yeah. salt. And so that is really good in your coffee, just a little, not the whole packet. Add some flavor. Uh, you could make probably hot cocoa and, and put and, some of that in there. And the other thing that's kind of nice, I like to do this with the chocolate salt, is if I make like a little bit more of a like a frothy coffee, sprinkle it on the top like they do. It, and then you get like, I like that little hit as uh -huh. you put your mouth on the cup. You get the salt, almost like a coffee margarita. You know what else you could what? do? What? I just thought of the cocktail for the oh, holiday cookbook. Oh, okay. You could rim your cocktail during the holidays with chocolate salt and there and make an espresso martini. That would be so good. And you know, I don't know if they're going to do it this year, but last year they did chocolate mint. Yes. So we'll during see. the holidays, uh, they did chocolate mint last year and I, I bet they bring it back. I bet they do. Yeah. Yeah. The habanero mango is really good too. Oh no. The element pack, the sample pack is sold out. Oh no. What is happening? <laughs> Everybody wants electrolytes. Julie says, I love the chocolate salt, but my hubby doesn't care for it. So more for me. Nice. And, you know, I know people actually who've done the creamy, you know, the, you guys know the creamy, right? The, the, it's the ice cream maker that's the creamy. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of people make keto chow in it, you know? Yes. And they do the creamy. And I have a client who's been adding the chocolate element to the creamy with the keto chow, it's a lot of sodium there, but some of us need more sodium. And she says it's amazing. It's like a chocolate, salted chocolate ice cream. Mm, that sounds really good. I actually have a creamy. 
You do? I have yet to use it. We're going to have to break that out. What's wrong it's with you? It's at Melissa's. Oh. It's at okay. Melissa's. Because I have no space for it. I bought it and I was going to do a review and then I was nine months pregnant and was like, you know what? I'll do that later. I will tell you something about the creamy, which is I love it. Um, my boyfriend, like the thing I've always known about him is every night he has ice cream. Every night. Every night. night? Oh every night. He's not keto. Every night he has ice cream. Since we got the creamy, he has had a creamy instead of ice cream every night that's that's good it has totally changed his hat and he's like i don't want ice cream anymore do i you want make it with keto creamy chow? i make it with keto chow mm -hmm. we do chocolate a lot um or we'll make ones with yogurt we do like yogurt mm -hmm. and because he's not keto, he gave him a little more carbs so he'll do like yeah. yogurt and fruit yeah um but it's still so low carb and i'm gonna say like if i had kids running around i think that would be very popular mm -hmm. Uh, K-Girl's Mom, yes, the cornbread recipe is in the cookbook. And my dressing recipe is in the cookbook, too. It cornbread is. dressing, is it dressing in your house, or is it oh, yeah. stuffing? stuffing? Or is it stuffing? Stuffing? No. It's dressing around here. Mm. No G. I'm from California. We say things different where I'm <laughs> from. Breaking, Kim Horton has a boyfriend <laughs> that she never talked about. She does talk about it. I do. I just don't talk. He did, He's a little camera shy. Yeah, he's not into it. Hey, Holly. Thank you. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the new addition meal to the cookbook is the Keto Chex Mix is going to be in there, too. If you've tried that, you know it is dangerous. That, like I say that in the YouTube video. Danger. Danger. Because it's that good. And it does have nuts in it, obviously. So you got to be careful if you're somebody who like can literally eat a whole thing of nuts. But during the holidays, you know, I give myself a break. It is so good. So yes, that's going to be in there too. <clears throat> we have several stuffings. A few dressings. So I grew up calling it stuffing. But we never stuffed it in the turkey. Yeah. I think that's common. Yeah. Uh, how about the keto fudge? Any keto fudge? So we're going to have the turtles. And we'll do a fudge because it's pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. It's about, it's in uh, the caramel or caramel. I keep using words that people say differently. I, I've noticed that like five of my recipe videos are pecan. 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 Oh, Toto. You're the one walking over her. So now I'm going to, the bacon's about, I'll show you how it looks, but the bacon's pre pretty much ready. I'm, I'm taking it out with a slotted spoon to leave the fat in the pan. Uh, how much will the Christmas cookbook be? Oops, I'm sorry. We talked about that. My nose is peeling. <laughs> to be announced. To be announced. It will not be crazy fits. We ain't, we ain't those people. If you want to know when it goes on sale, get on the alerts list over here because that's the easiest way to um, get notified about anything, basically, because of the algorithms choosing not to put things in your feed, even if you're following someone. Yeah, it solves that, but I didn't get notified yeah. problem. Yeah, I'm out of coffee, unfortunately. Oh, sad. All right, so I've left the bacon grease in the pan. And it's fine if there's a piece or two of bacon or a little stuff in there. It's not a problem. You can leave it in there. And I'm literally just now taking the onion that I chopped and putting it in the bacon grease. A whole onion. A whole, like, regular size, not super big or tiny. Just a regular size onion. Chopped, diced. Into the bacon fat. This is basically... A one pan thing with the exception of the brie being in the oven and something else. So it's not using a whole lot of things. I love recipes that don't need me to use multiple pans. And also because <clears throat> there's like, you just saw how long it took the bacon to cook. And the, and the onion is maybe the same or longer. Which means you can be doing other things. Because unless you're cooking something <clears throat> too hot, it's just, it's not going to burn in this much fat. Also, you can pre-make the bacon jam. 
And you should pre-make it because on a holiday when it's crazy. Right. So you pre pre-make this two days before you Christmas Eve or whenever you're gonna have your dinner that you're doing this for. And then all you have to do is bake the brie and put the topping on top of it and warm it up. So easy. So I'll show you the bacon. So you can see how it comes out. So you want it like firm enough, cooked enough that it's gonna have some chew. It's still a little crispy but not like hard right you don't want it crunchy or maybe you do i mean cook it to however however you want because what i <laughs> what we in the end when we're adding the onions and things to it we kind of want it to form like a jam like hold together a little bit so uh so yeah but this is how i like it but you can cook it however you like it um but what would you say i'd say it's like cr slightly Medium crisp crisp and it's got like it's chewy it's I still not got the chew to it it's yeah. not crunchy honestly if I make this myself, you probably cook it more. I would cook it more, but that's because I like crunchy bacon. And I like softer bacon. So. And the jam, like, is probably more of a jam if it's soft. It has that kind of texture to it, like a, what are you calling this? Bacon jam. 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 Not jam. chutney. I, don't I, know. I decided to go with jam. Jam. You can call it what you want. Okay. Will we autograph the Christmas books? There's, unfortunately, there's no, no way for us to do that because it's going to come from the printer. But then you can bring it to the next PhD Summit and we can sign it. If you inter intersect with either of us with your book, we will sign Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So, and then the thing I'm doing here, which is stirring the onion, is totally unnecessary, but I get bored. I so feel like you stop. need to do something. This can't I, possibly I be this I feel the easy. need to action. Yeah. But anyway, so I've got the onion. I, the fat is like <clears throat> bubbling. You want it hot enough that it's cooking, but you don't want it so hot that it's going to get out of control. Like you want to feel like you could walk away from this for a few minutes and it, nothing bad would happen. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You can't, I don't know that you can see into it, but it, there, the fat is like, a lot of fat. you know, not over the onion, but there's a good deal of fat in that pan. Yeah. There's no need to drain it right now. Like more fat is fine. It's not going to do anything. We're going to drain it the next step. Mostly because not, it, there'll still be quite a bit of fat involved, but let, then you'll, it'll be greasy and you don't want it greasy. Or maybe you do. Or maybe you do. And that's and up that's to fine you. Too. <laughs> Hi, Mitzi. Cornbread dressing here. My mom was a Tennessee. So chestnuts. I have a question about chestnuts. My mom is from the East Coast, and chestnuts were a very important part mm. of something that went in the stuffing. Really? Yes. Mm -mm. No. Not here. Uh -uh. Not for my family anyway. Yeah, I'm just the regional stuffing mm. dressing differences. So funny. Yeah. Like, my dressing has quite a bit of sage in it. Okay. All right. And, like, stuffing does not have sage in it for the most part, as far as I'm, like, on the, you know. Everybody mm -hmm. does it differently is the, the, the purpose uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. It's almost like sofrito. It's it's different in every family. Right. And that's what makes us all, you know, have our own sense of taste. That's why I like recipes like this because you can make it your own. You can use more onion, less onion, more tomato, yeah. less tomato, different spices. Uh, Jay says, what will you eat the brie with? So I either eat it with a fork or with carnivore crisp, the chicken breast, because they don't really have a lot of meat I tried flavor. it with the, the steak one yesterday, and it was good, mm -hmm. but it took it detract, distracted me a little from how much I wanted to focus on the brie flavor. Mm -hmm. But I also put it on top of my steak and just, like, ate my steak with the fork full of brie. Yeah, that was very, it was amazing. That was dinner. It was very good. It's very filling also. It is. I was like, and it's filling in this way, like, because it has different flavors, I texted Nisha, I got back to where I was staying, mm -hmm. and I was like, I am not stuffed, but I am very not interested in any food it's for filling. quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ivy. Thanks, Ivy. Jody, thanks for the super chats. A few years ago, I bought PDF download from Kim and Dr. Berry. Yeah, it was yeah. similar to the book that they just wrote. Can you ask Kim if that was just a smaller version? So several years ago, Dr. Berry and I did a labs course where we had a video where we talked about labs and then you got like a download of charts and the new book, we sort of put the course into words. So there's more writing in the new book, but the charts are basically the same. So if you're like a cut to the chase, I don't need explanations. I just want the charts person. Then you've got essentially the same information. We, But if you want to hear us talk about like, how do I check my blood sugar if I want to check it? Should I track this? How often should I track that? 
what does this test mean? Let us explain it to you in detail. So those kinds of questions are in this book that weren't in the course. It's way more in depth than yeah. what you have. Um, it's much thicker. Yeah, for sure. But that's but there is crossover for sure in terms of like the get these labs and here are the ranges you want to look to be in. Yeah. Sheena, what's your favorite butter? I like Vermont right now. I'm liking the Vermont, but when I can get it, uh, there's a local dairy, Amish dairy, and I've never had butter that good in my life. It tasted like popcorn, but without the pop, like it just had that mm, explosion like of salt. Nuttiness. Yeah. yeah. And it was yellow. Nice. Not soft yellow, yellow. And so when I can get my hands on that stuff, that's my favorite. What about you? What's your favorite? Quite honestly, I just like salted butter. Like yeah. I want my butter mm -hmm. salted. I'm not a big fan of, I mean, I use unsalted butter in a few recipes because it makes sense in that recipe, but I love the, just the flavor of salted butter. I remember when I was a kid, those are, I'm, so I don't know if you guys remember, but yeah, maybe it was just where I grew up, but said so there was like this time when like unsalted butter became like trendy, like, Oh, I'm so sophisticated. I really? put unsalted butter on things like fancy. I don't know. I just remember this. And I remember, always remember like putting, sprinkling salt on the butter. Cause I was like, it doesn't taste as good without the butter, without the salt. Is it on your website, the pre-order? No, uh, the common sense lab. No, it's, um, it's HTTPS. But for the book, for the common sense labs book, go to common sense labs book.com. This isn't a clickable link. It's just for the caption. Okay, commonsenselabsbook.com. So that's, you can screenshot that and go over there. And like she said earlier, if you weren't listening or you weren't here, end of the month is when they will be starting to be sent out. Shipping Not out. when it's going to get to your door. It could be fast. It could, you know how that shipping thing happens? <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Somebody's backing me up. Susie's backing me up. That, uh, yeah, and I'm from California, so that was the thing. Yeah, Neely has a new bread that actually has fat in it. So I may give that one a try. I was not interested in the protein bread. I tried it once. It tasted like styrofoam. I did not like it, but I'm willing to give it another shot if it has fat in it. So Yeah, I love, I interviewed, so if you guys don't know, I have a podcast. It's called Keto Life Support. And I, this week's episode that came out this, with Neely? or last week that just came out is with Neely. Oh, so cool. I interviewed Neely. We had a really good time. We talked a her. lot about bread and uh, I'm a big fan of the, I have a dog in my feet. Uh, I'm a big fan of the protein bread um, because I like to make sandwiches with it. It's useful. Um, but yeah, it's a little, you can't eat it like by itself without added choking. fat. So I'm looking forward to, although her modification, it's not That's choky. That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. The earlier version was <laughs> literally like, I might need to call 911 choky. Her version was like, this is a little dry, like stale bread dry. Mm -hmm. And then this new version is supposed to be super buttery. I think it's good to, for people to have like an option that is yeah. not actual bread as yeah. a tool. Uh, but I am just lazy. That's my toe. I'm Dog. lazy. Nope. And it seems like a lot of work. And the egg protein is expensive. So expensive. Like I think Kim did the math and it was something like $7 a loaf to yeah. make it, yeah. which is a bit crazy. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, mostly I am just, I just don't have the time to bake bread yeah. of any kind. <laughs> yeah. If I had a infant and a toddler, I would not want to make bread either. If you can, I don't know if you can see this. But. There's a dog. Well, now she's going to move. But <laughs> she was, there was like a tennis ball and she kept alternating between biting the tennis ball and, and my foot. Coat. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you want to get on my text alert list, all you have to do is text hi to this number right here. It is free. You can text stop at any time. Just text, say hi, follow the prompts. And then anytime an, uh, Kim's book, uh, Dr. Barry's book, cookbooks, anything like that, I'll send you guys a link and an update. I update you when I'm going live. Uh, Monday Night Live, I always send a link out to remind you, hey, it's Monday, hop on. Uh, if I have a new video, you get a text alert that the new videos just went live, that kind of stuff. I don't spam you. Sometimes I will tell you happy birthday, though.
Andrea said, I just made Neely's bread this morning and it's so good. It is. It's also just kind of fun to have something that you can put stuff on. It's just like real bread, especially with all the fat in it. See, fat makes we gotta, all we gotta the try difference. that. We gotta try the fatty version. Uh, you didn't get any prompts. You should get something that says, "Hi, are you okay with Nisha texting you?" And then you will text yes, and then you'll it should follow up. Try again. And I don't think it, if you're not in the states, I don't think it works. Oh, it might not work in the states. Yeah. yeah. Uh, does that bread toast well? Meta wants to know. Does it, it does okay. toast. But oh, oh, hey, there he is. It does toast well, but I will say that like if it's a little bit dry when it's not toasted. It's a lot dry when it is toasted. Mm, yeah, that but then sense. if you're going to add a lot of butter on top, that'll take care of that problem. But yeah, it does dry it out. The These onions are still, are still cooking because it's on a medium low. Yeah, it's on medium. Medium. But every okay. stove is different. Right. Um, there, I don't know if you can show it, but it's like there's bubbles. Yeah. So it's looking like that. You want it. Can you, you can kind of <laughs> see that? So it's making noise. Can you hear the noise? Sizzling. But it's not explosively right. so sizzling. Um, <laughs> LaShawn, I know. We need that iced tea vid, sis. I know, I know, I what know. What are you doing with iced tea? Well, I make my own sweet tea sometimes. Oh. Lately, I've been cheating and buying Milo's, <laughs> which doesn't have the best sweetener in it, I know. But it is easy to just grab that. But yeah, I, I know, LaShawn. Just keep doing that to me and tell, telling me that. Have and at some point, I will just do it. Good Earth. Uh, not, is it Good Earth? No, it's it's a tea called Sweet and Spicy Tea. It's like a chai. Ooh. Anyway, it, it's good. Just <clears throat> literally, I put, I get this one. I think it's Sweet and Spicy. It might be Good Earth. I'll, I'll send each the information. It does have a little stevia in the tea mix, like in the leaves. Mm -hmm. You literally can take a couple of those bags of tea and put it in a cold water pitcher in your fridge for like overnight yeah take them out and you've got like iced tea that's sort of like that oh. that spicy so it's like cold brew iced tea it, yeah it's like okay. the kind of tea you'd make a chai you know flavored tea although yeah. chai literally does just mean tea but you know what i mean if you order to chai, it's got that flavor okay cindy said i did i texted the number it just takes a couple of minutes for the prompts to come okay, okay cool and so it is available in canada and the states i think it's like europe it doesn't work All right okay so reason. just so you guys know in terms of this onion if you like sort of a spicy onion note then i would stop when it's just kind of cooked but if you want the the jam to be kind of that sweet onion flavor the longer you cook the onion the sweeter it tastes yeah. and so we're going for like browned onion you don't want it to burn you don't want that like brown edge you want the whole piece of onion to start to take on that caramely brown color. So that's what we're cooking it to. It's so good, guys. It's so but good. But it's like it's flexible. If you want it more like a little bit more spicy, then do it while the bacon, while the onion is still a little bit white and it'll be a little more onion flavor. Uh, oh, Nancy has tried the good earth sweet there you and are. spicy. It's good earth tea. Okay, several okay. of you guys. All right, have you done guys that. have done it. And it's sweet and it's spicy and it's just like I used it. You know when I used it? When I was trying to stop drinking Diet Coke. I was a Diet Coke addict. Like I had it, like I grew up drinking like six or eight cans of Diet Coke a day. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to stop drinking it after I went keto, but it was like really hard for me to give it up. And I started making that tea. Cause you know how that like chai flavor is like a little mm -hmm. cola-y? Yeah. It's good and it, it was a great transition for me. Will the cookbook have kids' food ideas? Yes, because Beckett, right? So there are two really cool kids' uh, Christmas holiday recipes. One's kind of Halloween-y and one is Christmas, and they're both really cool. So I'm very excited about that. And is that the only one that's, like, kiddish? Well, but I kind of feel oh, like I, feel, I, I will tell you guys, I like – I am a comfort food person. Like I like foods that kids like, and I'm just being honest. 
And I would say that mo oh, there are a lot of recipes in here that are pretty kid approved. Yeah. It's not like highbrow, confused, like. Yeah. You know, it's, it's good, tasty, simple recipes that most people are going to love. Oh my love. gosh, I just thought of a recipe we have to add that we didn't add. What? The, although this one is not as kid friendly. What? The, um, the uh, liver pate. Oh, yes. That is kind of festive. For the charcuterie. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that'd be good. Um, I will say any recipe is kid friendly if you allow them to participate in the process of cooking. Right. That helps Beckett more than anything that he had a part in it. He made this and so he is much more likely to try something that and he be knows. Proud it, of it, right? Yeah, he's proud that he made it. He knows what went in it, he knows exactly what it is. It's not some weird food that I just put on his plate. So yeah. Uh, cookbook will be available mid October ish, but get on the text list and you will know exactly when it is available for you guys. The bread recipe that's on Indigo Neely's channel. It's Indigo Neely on YouTube. Just type that into the YouTube search bar. She's got a lot. Yeah, you're gonna have to look for the one that now. It I says think it says 67 percent butter mm -hmm. on the picture. Yeah. Or it's it's I think it's her newest one that's bread. So if you go to her channel um, today, it's probably her latest video. <clears throat> it's meta exactly. It's shake and bake, and I helped. That's exactly the thing. <laughs> same thinking. Yeah. So I'm just checking the onion now. I'm going to give it another minute or two. Teresa said your chicken nuggets are fire. Thank you. Mm, no, that wouldn't work. Never mind. Forget I thought, forget I put my finger up like Dr. Berry. Uh, off topic, I bought the liver crisps and couldn't eat them. Did you try them? Yes, I'm not a huge fan. I have to be like in the mood to eat a liver chip, but I'll tell you who loves them. Lily <laughs> <laughs> and Toto love them. So uh, they don't go to waste. They're really good treats uh, for the dogs. If you bought them and you don't like them, give them to your pet. They're going to love them. Uh, Topo Chico is my jam. I know. it's. Ex I can't find it in this area. Oh, yeah? It doesn't exist. I have to order it, and it's too expensive for me to justify it just really because I like bottles. sparkling water. I, I just drink San Pell, but I think I'm going to get my soda stream oh, yeah. out again and just start using my soda stream because it's cheaper to do it that way, and really, I can get it way more fizzy than San Pellegrino, which is why I like Topo Chico in the first place, so I'm just going to start using it again, I think. Uh, what do you guys think about the egg fast? Not a big fan. I, it's fine. If you want to do it, give it a try. See how you like it. There's, I don't think there's anything magical about just eating eggs. It's It takes advantage of a couple of psychological food concept. It's almost like a, a trigger, I feel like, for people to, right. it's like the grapefruit diet right. and the potato diet right. and those Because it's, it's like this limited time doing something super restrictive and limited and like this weird schedule and like kind of complicated in some way. And then it ends. And then are you going to just like, oh, I've been waiting to eat all these different things. I think it's more triggering. Yeah. To limit yourself to one food, whereas you could do triple B and E and have the same effects because it's just protein and fat, which is what an egg is, you know, composited of. So I would do triple B and E in lieu of an egg fast just because it's less limiting. I think I'm happy with the onion this way. Okay. Good <laughs> inside. Thank you. Bless you. Uh, Crystal wants to know, does the carb, bless you, <laughs> is the true carb count, does it change while you're cooking an onion? And if so, how? Well, Good question. I know it is confusing. So I will say, um, in any in any carbohydrate, which you know, onion is a carbohydrate, primarily carbohydrate. Any food that you cook that is primarily carbohydrate, so broccoli, onion, anything like that, it's not that the carb count increases. So it's not like carbs get added. What it is, in fact, though, is that when we cook things, we break down the cellular walls. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you think about it, when you if you ate raw, something raw, yeah, it's very tightly bound in its, with it's, its in structure. Cage. Right. The structure, those cell structure that's very tightly bound. So as you chew it and you swallow it and you digest it, 
more of that is passed out of you without ever being absorbed. But if you, the more processed something is, and cooking is a process, the more those bonds open up, right? If I puree something, it's more digestible than if I eat it unpureed. The longer you cook something, the more those bonds open up. And so those open bonds are more available for absorption, which for some people is good in that you get more of the nutrients out of the food, but you also get more of the carbs out of the food. So I wouldn't worry about it for this specific for thing. some bacon yeah. jam. You know, it's like, okay, well, mm. my actual absorbed carbs went from, you know, I, it used to be like the total carbs in the onion for that amount of onion was four carbs, four grams of carbs. But now it's gonna, I'm gonna absorb five. People, I think, think onions have more carbs than they actually do. If you look it up, it's much less than is expected for a root type of thing, you know? And I'm, so I'm using the slotted spoon again. I'm like, I'm not like being obsessive about getting all the fat out of it, but I'm getting, I'm just kind of shaking it a little bit, getting the fat out, and I'm adding it to the bowl where I had the bacon. But you can see it's still greasy in there a little bit. Yeah. So, but I, you know, I'm just going to, I'm removing the, this stuff because I want to get the extra fat out or else it'll be more of a fat than a jam. So that's all. My phone is blowing up with you guys getting on the text alert list. This does come directly to me. It's not some weird thing. No one's getting your information. It comes to me, to my phone through uh, an app. So the, that phone number, this is not my personal phone number, but it does come to me personally. But I like, it's not where you can talk back and forth to me. It's just so you guys can get alerted about things. But it's cool to see all you guys saying, hi, hello, hi, hello, Nisha. Howdy, Nisha. Hi, hi, hi. So that's pretty cool. Thank you, guys. Um, do you have any more questions? Let's see. Yeah, it's not my personal number. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I mean, I am. So, but not that crazy. And I'm going to, so this is now great fat to cook in soon. You don't want to store fat that's had onion cooked in it for a really long, or garlic for a long time. It actually gets, it'll, it'll get rancid, rancid yeah. but like the next day or two you can cook with it. So you could save this and cook with it. I'm going to pour it off because we don't need it for this recipe. Yeah, but I'm going to cook my steak in it later. So I'll get a bowl back. Bowl, should I put it? Uh, there was a bowl earlier that we had from, uh, now I'm walking around with a pan of fat. <laughs> um, uh, that's a keto problem, only carnivore problem. Hang oh, on. I found it. Yeah, okay, cool. How are you guys liking this cook with me? Is this something that I should do more often? What do you guys think? For you guys just joining, we are making baked brie with bacon jam, keto, of course. And now I'm just putting the patent back on the heat and I'm gonna add these back into the pan. The bacon, the cooked bacon and the cooked onion. So the reason I did the last step was just to pour off the extra fat. If I wanted to say, um, you know, use a second pan and get another pan dirty, I wouldn't have had to do that last pour off step, but, um, I don't want to get another pan dirty. Yes. That, that's why we do these things as simply as possible. And I'm and also straining it a little bit here mm -hmm. to leave the fat, you know, behind as much as I can. People are loving the cook with me. Yes, we need to do more. The recipe is going to be in our holiday cookbook that is going to come out uh, around mid-November. If you want yes, October. to, I mean, that's what I meant, October. <laughs> If you want to know exactly when it is available, you can get on my text alert list by texting hi to this number and following the prompts. It is free. You can cancel at any time. Yeah, so this is what I told Kim yesterday. She was like, it's going to take a while for us to cook this. And I was like, that's okay. We can answer questions. And Sandy said, it's be I love it because I feel like I'm in your kitchen with you. I was like, people just really like feeling like they're part of the experience. So, okay, more cook with me's. And I feel like I might have put, I put the brie in maybe a few minutes early. So I'm going to just make sure it's not overcooking here. Hugs from Scotland. Hey, Hi, Scotland. Scotland. So I just, I put, you know, I put the brie in already. So you can see it puffed up a little mm -hmm. bit and it's looking, I'm going to take it out. I it think. Looks, yeah. Because it looks about right. Did the timer go off? It did. I, okay. It did. It's hard to overcook the brie. It's just going to get more melty. 
Uh, but well, I think you that's know, probably good. So that was actually about ish minutes, half an hour. Right, but, but uh, 20 ish minutes is, is, fine. is fine. So now mm -hmm. I'm going to add some some tomato. This is, These are just diced, diced tomatoes. tomatoes from a can. I don't want the liquid in there as much, though. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use a slotted spoon again to, to get this stuff out. I used a to small have one. a, yeah. All right. So this stuff I, is so good, you guys. I mean, it is so good. LaShawn said, yes, do the iced tea as a live. <laughs> I think they have a perspective okay. about something they want. I will. Is the brie wrapped in anything? No, it is not. It is just the brie um, straight out of the container. Now, we, you, traditionally, Kim tells me you can wrap it in a pastry. So I may test that out with some fat head dough at some point to see how it does but it needs to get the brie melted you know so i don't know we'll see what is brie oh i'm so sorry i guess so it is just a type of cheese uh it comes in a it has a rind on it yeah and it's found in the deli like it's not going to be hung on the wall of cheese it's usually in the deli area in the cooler and it's round like about this big and we'll, sh we'll cut it open for you guys so you can see. Um, but it's a soft cheese. So it's like a, it's a soft cheese. And it's wrapped in this rind. So it's like contained inside. There's a soft part inside and this, and this sort of skin on it. Mm -hmm. The skin is edible. Yes. You don't have to take it off. But after you cook it, if you're somebody, like some people, might, it might be a texture thing. It does peel off really easily after it's cooked. But I like it. So now I'm just adding the drained tomatoes. Again, I don't even get a colander out. I'm just using slotted spoons. Oh, I just answered. We just answered that question. <laughs> Loving it. Yeah, I like these cooked with me too. It feels like you guys are here with me. Hanging out. I just got the text message for the live just now. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I may need to update that app, maybe. Because someone told me the other day, I didn't get your text until like 30 minutes afterward. So I'm going to start sending it out a few hours early instead of the 10 minutes early and see if that doesn't help. Oh, hi, Carrie. I haven't seen your jokes. Sorry, it's going by pretty fast today. You guys are commenting a lot and I love it. So now I just added the spices and that's just kind of to what you want to taste. The paprika to me is the most important. Got a little, little bit of garlic. Smoked paprika. We love smoked paprika in this right. house. And a little bit of garlic powder. And then I, I am a wimp about cayenne. So I just added a teeny bit. That's up to your tastes. And you can see, I just put it all in here. There's a little bit of liquid from the tomatoes and stuff. So I'm just going to let this cook until it sort of comes together a little bit more. Okay. Nicole said she got the text exactly when I sent it. Cause I, th I sent it 30 minutes before it went live. Okay. So maybe it was just those two people's carriers were acting funny that day. Oh, that I don't can know. do it. That can. <clears throat> <sighs> the French cheese factory blew up and debris was everywhere. Dub cheese jokes. Ah <laughs> That's Carrie. Uh, will Dr. Berry bring some of the new books to Keto Palooza? Unfortunately, we weren't able to get that many. And so we sold them out. There wasn't even enough for everybody no. at the convention. I think people thought we had a ton of books and it was like 50 maybe? Less. A little less bit less. That, yeah, because so... it was a it was a pre-sale proof. Yeah. So the good news is those of you that are still waiting for your book, the error that's in there is a little misspelling. Uh, will be gone and fixed. So you get a better quality product. Some of the cheese books get shredded in the stream. Shredded in the stream. Oh, like, I think that's a buffering joke, like a shred. Anyway, we're still working on our understanding of things. John said, I'll take the one that has a misspelling in it. <laughs> Thank you. We might get one anyway. You never uh, know. For the record, it we didn't know it had a misspelling in it. it. We have proofed it and proofed it and proofed it. And it's just part of, it's part of writing a book that every That's now and then there's an F word T should have been. And, you know, 
<laughs> and that's why it's taken a little bit to get everybody's books to them. Yes. So you can order the book. I'm going to pop it up on the screen so you can screenshot it. Common Sense Labs book.com just take a screenshot and then you can go there um after or right now and buy the book and uh yeah that's it i'm excited do you eat brie hot or cold you can eat it cold it's just much better i, I traditionally always ate it cold um but it's always better if you bring it out for a little while because if things when they're really cold like straight out of the fridge they don't have as much flavor so traditionally, I would eat it cool, but leave it out at least 15 minutes. The flavor will intensify a bit. Um, but it's supposed to be, I mean, traditionally, like a spreadable cheese mm -hmm. that you could spread onto a piece of bread. Um, we're going to spread it onto some uh, chips, some Steak. carnivore crisp chips. But um, either way, either way. Uh, Elle says, maybe the misspelling will be a collector's item one day. It probably will. Thank you for I, that. That's kind of like Dr. Barry's first Lies My Doctor Told Me book, the original cover. When I see someone with that, it makes me want to cry because so much blood, sweat, and tears went into that first edition. And Was I'm there like, a mistake on the cover? No, it's oh. just, uh, it's oh, just it's it just looks different. Remember. Yeah, and it just hits me really hard anytime I see that. So a lot. I've seen how many people have brought their original like several, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you have the original. Thank you so more, so much, Roz. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, it just gets me right here every time I see that. The new cover is better, but I, I got sentimental attachment to of the course. original, you know. Now, Jane, the, we are the wrong people to be asking this question because we're going to tell you no. <laughs> Because uh, this is keto. Keto. And honey is pure sugar. And so 10 out of 10 do not recommend unless you are just going to have it on Christmas and it's going to not throw you down the rabbit hole of eating honey. Uh, but I still, I think it's better without. I, I prefer something like this. Right. Now, this we made, it's very savory. It's a little bit sweet from some of the like the caramelized onion one. But you can sweeten this up if you wanted to. You could use some brown sugar swerve or I forgot the vinegar. Hold on. I forgot to add the vinegar. Um, we, we forgot to add the apple cider vinegar to it. How much do you put? Like a like teaspoon? About two, two, two teaspoons. teaspoons. And you don't have to add that, but it does give it a little more hang. Yeah. But um, if you wanted this to have more of a sweet savory, it's certainly going to be savory from the bacon, right? Then you can add a little bit of brown sugar swerve or brown sugar allulose or whatever. Um, and it'll give it a little bit more of that sweet and sour, spicy tang. Yeah. I We made it with the sweetener and I was like, I don't think it needs it. I think that takes mm. away from the rest of the flavors for me. But, you know, it's up to you, personal preference. That's the cool thing about these type of recipes. You can add a little, take away a little, and it's not going to completely, like, ruin the dish. It's just going to make it more yours now traditionally all oh, that vinegar smells good with brie you might serve brie with like like a, a fruit spread like this is kind of traditional like quince paste is not is a very common thing but what i would do instead is there's a, a couple of brands good good and nature's hollow i like good good and uh, they make keto jams it's dangerous yeah definitely but if you wanted to go in that direction and it's a holiday, I might top the brie with one of those keto jams. And then you can get that sweet, yeah. cheesy, yeah. fruity thing so going on. There's another option for you there. So it's, you know, it might be a little higher total carbs than a lot of you like do regularly, but it's not going to blow up your blood sugar. It's very good. B cautious <laughs> and then give it to a friend at the end of the party oh we forgot to talk about this part this is the most important thing about the cookbook so mom says is the cookbook going to be a physical copy or a digital copy yes yay <laughs> both you can get a digital copy or a physical copy so Lucky we're gonna you. do that that's exciting right because last year it was just digital 
And I think a lot of you really like physical copies of things. So yes, you can do either one. And so now like this could be done whenever you want it to be done. The longer you let it cook, the more it's going to kind of come together and be more like a jam, right? But if you like it more like chunky, I mean, it's going to be chunky either way, but if you like it more like separate pieces, chunky, you, you can stop whenever it looks good to you. What do you think, Nisha? Should it go longer or you think it's good? Uh, maybe a little longer. A little longer. So yeah, and it what softens up last, obviously, is these tomatoes. And if you want to give it a little help, you smush. can kind of smush them a little bit. Yeah. Uh, for those of you wanting to know when the book is going to come out, the easiest thing to do is sign up for text alerts. This will also let you know when we go live, when Kenberry goes live, and then also when cookbooks go on sale and that sort of thing. So it's free. You can stop at any time. More cook with me. I gotta come I back to, to Tennessee more often then. I know. I can do one by myself. It's not gonna be as good because I can't lift the, well, I guess I could lift the laptop up during some, but not while I'm doing something. I would you have gotta, to have, You need like a camera over here. I would need two cameras, yeah. I bet Chris, I mean, uh, Joe could help me figure out how to have two cameras. Mm -hmm. He's really good at that stuff. Ooh, this sounds good. Uh, I love brie with herb and pine nut topping. Oh, nice. That sounds amazing. I love pine nuts. Do you like pine nuts? I do. They're a little on the carby side. Yeah. You know what I bet would might be good? Peely. Peely nuts. You could do the peely nuts. Mm -hmm. They're very buttery. They're a little expensive. Is there a, another brand from the They're ones? They're all expensive. They're They're like, they come from someplace very exotic and have to be shipped. I think it's the Philippines. Yeah. And they're not grown very many places by very many people. The they're person, like have to have a perfect environment to grow, something like, like that. The, they're like the truffle of nuts. Hey, there's like 800 people watching this video. What? Hi, guys. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. This hey. will be available for replay for those of you who want to watch from the beginning. We're making bacon jam. Bacon jam brie. Y'all feel free to ask us questions too. Whatever. I'm not a neat cook, so no one should expect a clean stovetop after this occurs. I mean, are there people that are? I think most of us are slinging stuff all over the place. Joe is the expert. Yes, he is. Uh, L. Greg says, this is like a girl day. <laughs> girl time. I feel this is probably about the way I like it. Now, I will say, because we didn't add any, like, sweetener or anything that kind of gets sticky, mm -hmm. it's more of a loose jam, right? It doesn't have that. But if you wanted that sort of more stickiness, if you use Swerve or Allulose or something like that, it does actually help it sort of stick. But yeah. I find no reason to do that, really. This is more like a, a spread. It's just a top, topping. topping. Yeah. A topping. That's what. Well, we get to see the baby. She is taking a nap right now. If she wakes up in the next few minutes, then maybe. Maybe. We're dull not, women have not clean houses. The baby up for the yeah. life. Yeah, dull women have clean houses. Well, listen here. If that's what? true, then I am definitely not dull. Okay, good. I was my like, house is never clean. <laughs> so this is the brie. It's still very warm, and so I'll just I'm, squishy. I'm going to touch the food. So okay. you can see that it's very squishy, and it's not this squishy when it's not baked. That's because it's it's now hot, warm inside, right? So I'm just going to put the topping on this in this, you think? Well, they, they'll be able to see it okay when yeah. we slice it, yeah. yeah? Oh, Bonnie says, I was thrilled that you named your baby Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good name. Is there such a thing as a clean house? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Not if you have kids. <laughs> or a Kenberry. 
So I made a lot more than we need here. So I'm just putting it on top. And But I kind of like it to kind of drizzle over a little bit. Yeah. Because I like lots of topping. So I'm just kind of going over. You can go as neat or not neat as you want. But there we go. And then you can save this for later because you're going to want it. Should we slice into it and show them what it looks like yeah, inside? Yeah. All right. Someone said, next cook with me, we need wine. You know what? We have wine. We have a, a ton of wine because Dry Farm Wine uh, was one of our smaller sm sponsors and they left us with like 20 bottles of wine. So, so okay. So I'm just going to cut into this to show you what it looks like. Can they see okay? Yep. So look at that melty soft brie. If I left it in there longer, it would completely be oozing. But I think we want, I like it just softened and mm -hmm. not structureless. So you can hold up a fork. Cool. Right. Give you a good meal slice. So you can see it's sort of. It, it it's should it's kind so of um, melty. Kind of be uh, stretchy. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not completely liquidy, but you can see it's warm. And so all the flavors are kind of intensified and you put some of that on it and then you, and then it in you your face. eat it or you put it on one of the carnivore crisp chips. It is so good. I mean, like I have put six more wheels of brie in my Walmart shopping cart because I am now addicted. So this recipe is going to be in our holiday cookbook coming soon. You can find out exactly when it drops by getting on my alerts list. And I will send that link out. Sorry. Got something in my eye. To you guys. And you won't miss it because the algorithm hates everybody. There is what we've got that here. That is a huge bind. Don't put this much on unless you are aggressive. Unless Don't, you're Kinberry. Not really a date experience. But you can see here, these chips will hold a lot of this stuff. How many servings is that? One. <laughs> but uh, I think four would probably be about how many servings because it's like you could cut it into fourths. But it's great for a party, mm -hmm. right? Or like serving on a table like with other things. Appetizer. So. Holiday servings are like different serving sizes than other times. Yeah. I, I could eat the whole thing by myself and right. would. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. What is it? I logged on late. So uh, it is baked brie. Baked brie with bacon jam. If you're taking requests for the next cook with me, can you do your beef tartare? Oh. That's a good one because there's really not a lot of cooking to that. It's more like prep. A lot of chopping. Yeah. Ken? Yeah? Dr. Brie says yes. That's great. Um, is this like a dip? Kind of. It's. As, mm. I would not call it a dip because you're not really... Dipping, dipping. It's although that like, topping could be a dip. It's the like a hot, di a hot dip. dip. Yeah. yeah. It's more like a spread. Spread. Yeah. You'd, you'd you want a knife on, to spread it on something. You could put it on Neely's bread. Yeah, absolutely. That would be really good. That would be really good now that I think about it. So if you didn't know, uh, Indigo Neely has a YouTube channel where she does like a hundred different variations of protein bread, but she has one that's a fat bread now. Right. And I'm, uh, I'm hearing very good things about it, and I'm someone who needs fat. I cannot do anything that tastes like styrofoam, looks like styrofoam, or is like all protein. Like it just um, no, it's a no for me. I know some people love it, so I'm very excited to try that because everyone who's tried it so far is like, oh my gosh, yeah, we this have is to so try good. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, this is a holiday recipe. You know, have as much or as little as works for your current approach and what you need. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, you know, even if I'm in a weight loss phase or whatever, you know, on a holiday, I'm going to have a few things that I wouldn't otherwise have. And I feel like this can fall into that, yeah. but everybody can eat whatever they want, whenever they want. Yeah. That works for them. It's your life. We ain't your mama. Thank God. <laughs> uh, KJ says, what's your favorite brand of Brie? Do you have a favorite brand? I honestly I think there's probably higher quality and lower quality, but I usually go to the cheat like a cheese counter, yeah. like and ask the people there, like, what is a really good brie for baked brie? Because mm -hmm. often, actually, they're they can be different. Okay, um, some are better, and they actually do make for those of you that are sensitive to cow dairy, you can get sheep brie. It's 
expensive. Sheep, sheep not sheep. 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 Like, bah. <laughs> anyway, and that's a different type of dairy. For a minute, I heard cheap and I was like, let me just. Don't buy cheap brie. Sheep. Sheep. I mean, you can't, but you yeah. know. Okay. Oh, uh, what happened there? Got a lot. It went really fast. Yeah. Uh, how long before that wine clears the liver so you can get back into ketosis? I, I think it's like 24 hours or something. Right? So it's, you know, it depends it's how much wine you yeah. drank um, and uh, how big you are. How and, healthy you are, probably. Right. You know. And how busy and distracted your liver is otherwise. Um, but certainly by the next day, you should be back in that. Okay. So uh, before we get off of here. Yeah. There are, uh, I'm going to give you a little preview of what else is going to be in there that's kind of newish. So I'm going to do a goat cheese cheese ball recipe. For those of you who can't eat cream cheese or sensitive to cow dairy, it's going to be goat cheese. Of course, you could substitute cream cheese if you're not sensitive, but goat cheese is a little bit better, I think. And we're doing a two kids recipes. I'm not yep. going to tell you what they are. It's a surprise. What's another new one that we're doing in there? Um, My Chex Mix is going to be in there. Pumpkin bisque. Pumpkin bisque. I'm excited mm -hmm. about the pumpkin mm -hmm. bisque. Um, what are a few other ones? We've, uh, we're also adding um, collard. Collards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a, a bunch whole of list. stuff. Yeah. yeah. We made a list. So uh, I'm excited. Get excited. I am now starving. Yes, we are. And my child is fixing to wake up, so I want to eat. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. If you just hopped on, you can watch the replay of this. Share it on Facebook. Share it with a friend. And make sure that you are on the text list for alerts on when I go live, when Ken goes live, when Kim's cookbooks okay. go up, when our cookbooks go up, when Common Sense Labs is heading mm -hmm. to you. Shipping out. Yeah. By the way, tonight on my YouTube channel, Kim Howerton is my name. Uh, Ken Berry is going to be my guest. So if you want a little extra Ken Berry tonight, he's going to be on my channel at 5 Pacific Time, 7 Central. YouTube channel? YouTube channel. All right. If you want to follow Kim on Instagram, she is the ketonist on Instagram. Her YouTube channel is... Slash Kim Howerton. And it's linked in the description along with her website. So go check out all those things and follow Kim because she's amazing. And I will send a link out to those of you who are on the alerts list when they go live tonight. So you won't miss that as well. I send them out for Ken and myself. If he's doing a live with someone else, I always send them out too. He really needs his own, but he wouldn't use it anyway. So it falls on me. That's okay. All right. Thanks guys for hanging out with us. I'm going to go shove this brie in my face now. Bye, guys. Love you, Maynard. Bye.